and ask for uh, directions. directions to, <laughs> to uh, Sandy's house. We had to call him three different times. Third time I said, I hope you don't witness the people the way you give directions. I don't know how you're going to tell, tell somebody how to get to heaven. You can't even get them across the other side of Fairmont. You know, actually, what I he's, told he's him, I hope you don't. Know, to find that house. I said, I hope you don't witness the people like you following directions to the house. I said, <laughs> don't bother me again. I said. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. I may have bit off a little bit too much this morning, but we'll, we'll try to get somewhere with it. Um, oh, no. It is wonderful to have Sarah here. Yes, it is. And I, I'm going to tell you, folks, you know, when I, when I was down at David's church uh, there in Georgia, uh, David lives at their church is in about 30 minutes on the other side of Atlanta, and he had people that drove to that church from Alabama. Hmm. And the, uh, there was another guy that goes to his church that found David's church because he was willing to drive from Atlanta to Chattanooga to go to, uh, oh, what is his name? There's a guy that's got a right division church there in Chattanooga. I was just down there for a big Bible conference last summer. But uh, the guy drove from Atlanta to there, and that guy said, you ain't got to drive all the way up there. There's, there's one right outside of Atlanta, David Osteen, Hope Bible Church. And so, but the, the, the point I'm making is that's the people who find right division. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Those are the kind of people that find the truth because yeah. they want it. You understand? They search, they search it out in the scriptures. They search it out. They're, I mean, they, they just want the truth of God, and God gives it to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you just want if you just want a fly by night church, man, you ain't got to drive nowhere to find them. Amen. You probably got five in your neighborhood. Yeah. Let's go pick one. I mean, half the people in them ain't saved and don't know how to be saved, and right. the ones that are saved don't know that they are and are going to doubt it until the Lord comes. Yeah, yep. And because it's it's not a church that emphasizes the Word of God. Ephesians chapter one. What passages we have here. Amen. I mean, Paul says in 14 verses, he says more in these first 14 verses of Ephesians 1 than you get in the whole volume of the Library of Congress. Yeah. Right. I don't just say that. I, I, I mean that. Yes. Sir. Yeah. I believe there's more in these 14 verses, in 14 verses of this first chapter of Ephesians than the entire volume of the Library of Congress. You think I'm joking? I'm not. Let's look at it. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Where else are you going to find out about it? <laughs> you see, actually, we just start right there in that verse. Amen? Yeah. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, <laughs> that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. People who practice religion are, are seeking acceptance with God. Did you know that? Yeah. They're seeking to make themselves acceptable unto God. That's not biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is God hath made you accept. Amen. God did. Look at what he says next, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together and want all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, Amen. being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things of the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, yeah. in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. <laughs> My goodness. Where yeah. do you even start with stuff like that? I've been reading Ephesians. I've been reading Ephesians now 17 years. 
and I keep finding stuff in those 14 verses. Yeah, yeah. Just keep getting a better and better understanding of what a portion of Scripture. Look, look in verse 13. In whom you also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth. Is that you? Mm -hmm. If that's you, then this, 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 all these things are about you. Yeah. Yeah. Every bit of it. Paul didn't put any other stipulation on these things. He didn't say if this and if that. He said in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. Amen. The gospel of your salvation. What was the gospel of your salvation? How that Jesus Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Amen. Yep. And Paul said after you heard that gospel, you trusted in him. Yep. And after you trusted in him, it all become yours. Amen. Yep. Amen. You, I mean, you see that? It's Listen, folks, it's, that is you or it's not. You're either trusting in Christ or you're not. You're either trusting in what he did for you or you're trusting in what you're doing yes, to get you to heaven. And if people could only, if, if, if people could only see, if, 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 if you have trusted in Christ, look at what Paul says down in verse 15. He says, wherefore, because of this, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all, all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know yeah. what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who what? Who what? Believed. And so, and so what Paul's saying here is he's saying, if you've trusted in Christ, this is what God has done. It goes back to before the foundation of the world. He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. He purchased us, Bill, before we were ever born. Mm -hmm. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Amen. God purchased and paid the price for me before I was ever born. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He gave his son and paid the great price. And then when I trusted, he sealed me. You know what that means? Yeah. He marked me as his own. Amen. I mean, I have a seal this morning called that Holy Spirit of promise that marks me as one of God's purchased Amen. possessions. Amen. And because of that now, my, my redemption is something that God planned out before the foundation of the world, and it's going to go on throughout all ages, world without hey, end, yeah. Ephesians 3.21. Yeah, right. Hey, Amen. <laughs> think I'm worried about it? I'm not worried about anything. So why not? I've read that book and I know what I have in Christ. Yeah. The difference, you see, that's the difference between somebody who's truly spiritual and somebody who's carnal putting on a show. Mm -hmm. Paul says, if you've trusted in Christ, I want God to open your eyes so yes. that you can know what I know. So that you can understand the hope of his calling. What the hope was when he called you by the gospel. The calling of God comes by the gospel. Amen? And when God called us by the gospel, it was because he had chosen to do something before the foundation of the world. And he's chosen us to a purpose. He seated us in Christ, blessed us with everything this morning. We're eyeball deep in the blessings of God this morning Amen. in Christ. Yeah. And he's given us, listen, Bill, the earnest. You read that earnest there. You know, it, that would be like, it would be like me going and paying a price and freeing a bunch of slaves. You know, they're up there on the auction block and I show up and I just buy all of them. And I slowly walk up and start unlocking the, the handcuffs. Saying, don't worry about it, boys. I just bought you to set you free. You know? And then I say, I got a big, I got a big you know, estate down here and I'm going to give y'all all an inheritance in it. And until I come back to get you, here's a big bunch of riches that, I, that I've given you to enjoy until I come back. Amen. That's what the earnest is. Yeah. You know, what I, you know what I've come to realize? The more, I, the more I seek out those riches of Christ and the more I enjoy Him down here, Bill, the more I realize how rich He is, the more I start saying, mm, Lord, come. I start groaning. The more I taste of those riches of what I've been blessed with in Christ, the more I long for Him to come and get me out of here. Amen, amen, amen. amen.
And so Paul's prayer, man, if you could just get people to, to, to know who they are, where they are, yes. what they have. Mm. Is Ephesians 1.13 you? Mm -hmm. Have you trusted in Christ because of the gospel? If that's you, you are in Christ. Yeah. You're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. <laughs> Amen. Amen, a member of his body. If you've trusted in Christ, you are seated right now in heavenly places Amen. in the Son of God. Yeah. And if you're in Christ, God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Amen. Amen. What Very few mean? will ever know it. Right. First Corinthians 2, 9, I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man yeah. the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Mm -hmm. They've been in preparation since the foundation of the world, Bill. Amen. <laughs> but very few people are ever going to know it because I can't. These things are spiritually discerned, according to Paul, First Corinthians two fifteen. Right. And you have to have the renewing mind of the holy, uh, the, the renewed mind of the Spirit of God to be able to perceive and to discern these things. Yeah, yeah. And religion will not give it to you. And so, what we have in these verses here in Ephesians chapter one is Paul's laying out the great plan and purpose of God redeeming a dead, fallen ruined, unprofitable, sinful creature like myself. Yeah, yeah. Unprofitable. Yeah. That's what Paul said in Romans 3. They are together to become unprofitable. You take something unprofitable and, God, and then look at what God paid to have it. Yes, amen. You say, you say, how do you explain something like that? Why would God pay such a great price for something he said was unprofitable? It began with his love. Yeah. Amen. And I, I'm telling you, man, a being, a being that loves you that much to pay that price for you when you were in your lowest and most unprofitable state, that is a being worthy of your attention. That is a being worthy of your love. Amen? And Paul lays out this great redemption here, and he lays it out in four parts. It began before the foundation of the world. Look over in Ephesians 3. I quoted the verse, but I want you to read it. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That is a verse right there, man. I mean, I mean, Paul said in Ephesians 3.21 that God is, going to, God is going to show the exceeding riches of his grace to us one day. The exceeding riches of his grace. He says, unto him be glory, or under him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, what a, what a thing, Bill. And when Paul lays out this redemption, he lays it out in four parts. In the first, the first, from verses four through six there, he talks about predestination. I mean, folks, you could sit down here. I, I love that song, Rock of Ages. I know Augustus top lady was a, was a four, five point Calvinist. We'll forgive him. He still wrote a good song. Yeah. <laughs> Augustus top lady says in that song, he said, Could my tears forever flow and could my zeal no longer know? Yeah. These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. Right. You can cry and snot and snort and repent. And, and offer God this and offer God that and do everything in the world you wanted to do. If it wouldn't have been in the heart of God to reconcile and redeem man, he wouldn't have done it. It had nothing to do with you. God made this plan and purposed this thing before the foundation of the world yes, according to his own good pleasure and according to his own will and purpose. Huh. And so it began back there when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Jesus Christ came to the world to pay the great price of our redemption. He come to purchase us. Yeah. God planned it. And then the day came that he purchased. And after, after you believed, he sealed you. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is how you redeem something. You got to decide you want to redeem it, and then you got to lay down the money and pay the price, and then you sell it. Go back there and read. I mean, I can we can go back to the Old Testament and talk about 
kinsmen, redeemers, and all the laws concerning redeeming land and how Jeremiah bought that piece of land and then sealed it and all that stuff. We can go back and look at all that. We're not going to look at any of it. I, I just, I, I, I don't have time. But I want you to understand this. That God planned to do something for the foundation of the world. Before you were born, His Son came into this world and died on the cross to purchase you with His own blood. Yeah. And God says if you will believe what my Son did for you, you are part of this great redemption plan. I will seal you in my Son with my Holy Spirit of promise. And one day, yeah. one day I'm going to come and redeem what I've purchased. <laughs> the day of redemption. Yeah. What a precious day. Amen. And if you've got this, and if, you, if you've been taught right, you've been instructed right, and if you've got the renewed mind of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is going to make you look for that day. Yeah. You, you have no choice but to look for that day if you've been taught right. Amen. And so, uh, those are the four steps. Now, three of them we're just going to look at real quick. Uh, maybe. The fourth one is the one I really want to look at this morning. The day of redemption. Now look there in Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. This verse is an absolute rebuke of modern Christianity. Do you know that? This is a rebuke of Pentecostals. <coughs> this verse rebukes fundamentalism. It rebukes Methodists, Catholics, the Church of Christ, and any other carnally minded people with the spirit of bondage. In a, in a religious system that declares them and, and demands them to perform to be accepted of God. You realize how many people are sitting in church this morning bankrupt spiritually. Spiritually bankrupt. Paul said that he come to teach the unsearchable riches of Christ. That the Spirit of God came to make known what is the riches of of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And people sat in church their whole life bankrupt spiritually. Yes, sir. Why? Didn't Paul say in Colossians 2, 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, right. vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, not after Christ. A religion that's uh, any church you go into and set, that that church is not structured and modeled to take you and show you who God has made you in Christ and make Him the focal point and to show you everything God has freely, freely given you in Christ. Any religion that doesn't do that is a religion of bondage. Yep. Yep. That is going to rob you blind of this great redemption and what Jesus Christ died to, and purchased to freely give you. Yep, man. That's the reality of it. Why don't people know these things? Religion has robbed them of these things. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1 3, that verse is a slap in the face and a rebuke of all modern Christianity. That verse, that verse tells you right there that God hath already blessed us. Sure. With what? All. Oh. You know what the word all means? He didn't hold any of it back. <laughs> the moment you got in Christ, God blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. They're all yours. And while you're down here trying to perform, yeah. God, God, will you give me something now? God, what about now? Yeah, I'm dressing right, God. Will you give it to me now? I go to church on the right day of the week now, God. God's already freely given. If you're in Christ, He's already freely given it to you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Paul said, don't let any man spoil you of it. He said in Colossians 2, he said, let no man beguile you of your reward. If you be risen with Christ, he said, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. They're already yours. God's already freely given them to you in Christ. And by the Spirit, Gary, I'm in Him. Amen. Me and Christ, the Spirit that's in me, is the same Spirit now seated in heavenly places in the Son of God. I have a connection to Him Amen. on a spiritual level that, that is more real than any union you've ever known in this world. Yeah. It's such a real union that me and Him can share the same mind. Mm. What, a, what a thing. 
<laughs> I mean, you, 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 you. I don't even know how to begin to comprehend it sometimes, Bill, but I love it. Amen. And while people are down here trying to, trying to perform to be accepted with God, Paul said in Ephesians 1, 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the blood. Yeah. I'm accepted. I'm accepted in Christ. It had nothing to do with anything I did. Right. The moment I believed the gospel and gotten the Son of God, God had made me accepted in Him. Amen? Amen. God didn't bless you according to anything you've done. He didn't bless you according to anything you were doing or will do. You, you realize Paul uses the word according five times in these first 12 verses. And not one thing in there is about you. Everything that God done and everything you now have in Christ is according to something God chose to do or something God did. You're nowhere in the text. Look at verse 4. God blessed you right now. He blessed you with everything according to what? According to him choosing you in Christ before the foundation of the world. What are you going to do with that? You going to reject it? You going to reject something God purposed and planned to do before the foundation of the world? Look at verse 6. Having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to what? The good pleasure of his will. You still ain't showed up. Look in verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Where were you at when the Son of God died on Calvary? In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to what? The riches of his grace. Look at verse number 9, or I believe it's verse 8. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, which he hath what? Oh, let me get over there. Let me get back over there and read uh, Verse number, yeah, verse number 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Mm -hmm. You still ain't showed up. Right. <laughs> the, the, I mean, the verse, the, the chapter began with you blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places yeah. in Christ. And Paul said, according to him choosing you, predestinate, he said all these things, you still ain't showed up. It had nothing to do with you. Right. Right. What you now have as a result of being in Christ is all according to God. Amen. Look at what he says in verse, uh, verse number 11. In whom also we've obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to what? The purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <laughs> you accepting it yet? I just can't believe that preacher. Oh, well, sorry for your loss. Yeah. You know where you are? You don't show up to verse 13. And all it says about you is that you trusted him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do with it now? God, got, at some point in time, God called you by his gospel. At some point in time, that's how God calls men today. He calls us by the gospel. At some point in time, we heard that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day. And when we trusted that gospel, we got in on all of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it was all according to the riches of God's grace and nothing more. <laughs> nothing more. Nothing, nothing, no, nothing less. It's all through grace. Look at Ephesians 2, 7. Oh, it just, listen, you don't even know how, I, how good it's going to get. <laughs> you have no idea. It, it's just begun, Bill. What I'm getting right now, the, the first fruits of the Spirit, that's the earnest of my inheritance. Yeah. What the Spirit of God is doing in me right now, in my mind, and, and making these things known and showing me these great riches, that is just the earnest of my inheritance. Just a taste. Amen. Look at Ephesians 2, 6. And hath raised us up together and made us what? Sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Why? That in the ages to come. Yep. He might show what is the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Amen. Yep. I don't read you the verse in Ephesians 3, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. 
You have no idea what God has prepared for you. That's right, preacher. But I know this, Bill. He was thinking about it before the foundation of the world. Mm. We'd sit down here at this little self-absorbed, self-centered, inner ego. Just, just this. It's all about me, and the world's all about me, and all of heaven and earth revolves around me, and it's about me and me and me and me and me. Before you ever showed up, God was planning something out before any of this showed up. Yeah. Before you drew your first breath, God's son came down here and died on the cross for you. That's right. And then God called you and said, my son died for you. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to believe in him, Lord. Good. Now you're in him and I've sealed you there and you just wait, big boy, because in the ages <laughs> to come, you're going to get some stuff. Yeah. Bill, listen, it was enough for me that he forgave me of my sins. Yes, sir. That was enough for me. The fact that the Son of God bled and died and through him I now have redemption, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, that's enough for me. I could go to heaven, get on my face, and spend eternity on my face before God and never open my mouth again. Mm -hmm. God went above and beyond me. Took me, out, took me out of the lowest hell, pulled me out of the fires of hell, yeah. and seated me at his own right hand in heavenly places in his son, Jesus Christ, and said, now I've given you an inheritance. <laughs> what are you going to do with something like that? <laughs> Redemption. Yeah. Redemption. Look at verse 4 there. Ephesians 1, 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Let me draw that out. Let me see if I can draw that for you. I mean, how do you even explain something like that? According as it, and that goes back to verse 3. So right now, Christ is up here in the heavenly places at the right hand of God. Where am I at? I'm in him. Yeah. I'm up here in Christ. Down here on the earth, Christ is in me. You see, this is, this is me down here, and Christ is in me. I'm in him, and he's in me. And up here, Bill, because I have this position, God has blessed me with everything that's in his son. Mm. And it all happened the moment that I heard about that and trusted in Christ. I got in him, and I was, I was sealed in him until the day of redemption. But it's all a result Something that God chose to do all the way back before Genesis 1 1. Yeah. I can't comprehend that. I can't. But He did it. Amen. He chose us in Christ. Now, now listen, we're, we're, we're not talking about the vain imaginations of John Calvin, but look at what he look, look at what he says. The very idea that God, all the way back there, you think he didn't know you? People say, oh, I believe he died for my past sins, but not my future sins. God knew it all, folks. Amen. When God went all the way back there before the foundation of the world, you think God didn't see that man would be a fallen and ruined and sinful, dead, unprofitable creature? He did. Sure. And he still chose to redeem it. Amen. And he still chose to save it. And he still chose to pay it. To purchase me with the blood of Christ. Mm. I mean, let, let me drive this home for you, folks. <clears throat> you see this right here? People say, I, I don't believe that that's how salvation works. You know what Paul said in Romans 6, 16, 26? You know what he was preaching? He was preaching something God had kept secret since the foundation of the world. Paul said the wisdom we now have is something that God ordained for our glory before the world began. You know what Paul said in 2 Timothy 1, 9, 9? That God saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ before the world began. Uh -huh. Titus 1, 2, Paul says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. <laughs> What do you do with that? And when God, so, so when Paul comes down here in the verse 5, look at what he says now. He says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. 
Predestination. Now, now this has nothing to do with John Calvin and Tulip and, and unlimited uh, 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 unconditional election and all that stuff. Predestination deals with what God has predetermined He's going to do for you Amen. in your life. The election, election was in Christ. He chose you where? In Christ. Paul said there was a time that we were without Christ. Yeah. Meaning we were outside of it. You got in Christ in time. What God chose back here is he chose men in Christ. In other words, I've determined I want men in Christ. It's up to you whether you get in there or not. Mm -hmm. God will have all men to be saved. Right. It's God's will that all men be saved. But God has determined all the way back here, this is how I'm going to do these things. I'm going to do them in my son. And my son's going to come down and die. And anybody that believes can be in my son. But he chose us in Christ. That's the election. You have to get in him to be the elect. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. How do you get into him? Faith in the gospel. Paul said, 2 Thessalonians 2.13... God from the beginning hath chosen us to salvation. Isn't that wonderful news? Mm -hmm. That God from the beginning chose to save us. How though? Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. How did God choose us from the beginning? He chose us through belief in the truth. In other words, whoever believes the truth, the truth of what? The gospel. You believe the gospel, God chose you. Before the foundation of the world to salvation. And guess what? If you want you get in Christ, he's already predestinated it. The body of Christ has a destiny that you ain't going to get out of. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, you, you can sit down here and bite your fingernails and worry about it and, and you know, hope you endure and hope you make it and all that stuff. If you're in Christ, you're called. To a purpose that God had before the foundation of the world. And all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Yeah, true. We're predestinated to three things, Bill. Adoption. Mm -hmm. Adoption. Adoption of children. You know what it is to be adopted? That's when you take a stranger and treat him as your own son. That's what adoption is. Paul said we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. I'm an adopted child of God this morning. Yes, sir. I have that spirit of adoption in me. You know what that means? That means God took this old vile, wretched, dead sinner over here and gave him the same standing as Jesus Christ in his sight. You're right, my, my. You think the Pope's preaching this this morning? No. Adoption. What else was I predestinated to? Ephesians 1.11, I've been predestinated to an inheritance in Christ. In whom also we've obtained an inheritance. I have an inheritance in Christ. Well, what is that? Look back in verse 10. What all's in Christ? What is God's plan? To gather all things in heaven and earth in him. Yeah. So, so in order to have, God is all of heaven and earth, Bill. All the nations, Israel, the body of Christ, the angels, the heavenly realm, the earthly realm. It's all going to be under his headship one day. God made him the heir of all things. <laughs> yes, he says, you get it all. And when I got in him, Bill... I got a piece of it. I've obtained an inheritance in him. In Christ. Now notice what he says there though. According to the purpose of him. So this inheritance is according to God's purpose. God has given me an inheritance in this heaven and earth that he's gathering into his son because God wants me to do something in the ages to come. It's part of his reconciliation for He's, he's, he's chosen us, and we're, we're, we're going to get positions when we get there. And I want you to understand that you're, what you live, how you live right here, right now, determines your eternity in the world to come. It's going to determine your inheritance. Salvation is a gift of God. Anybody who's a child of God is an heir of God. 
But we can all, and I'm going to show this as we get to the day of redemption, but I've got, I've got to hurry up. The third thing we've been predestinated to is the image of Christ, and that's Romans 8, 29. And so the second part, not only do you, do you have predestination, you have the purchase. Ephesians 1, 14 calls us, Paul says, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. That's what we are. Mm -hmm. We're a purchased possession. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 20 that you are bought with a price. There was something paid for you. God paid to have you. Yeah. And what he paid, what he paid was the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Where do I even begin with that, folks? I mean, there's tons of stories in the Old Testament. My favorite one, though, is Hosea. God tells Hosea the first time he goes, he says, go take a wife of whoredoms. Yeah. He said, according to the, he said, for the land hath committed great whoredom, apart from God. So, so when God took Israel, made that covenant with them, it was like him taking a wife. But they were a wife of adultery. They, they cheated on him with all these other pagan gods. And God's telling Hosea, he said, I want you to take a wife of whoredoms, and that's going to represent my relationship with Israel. But then she, she, she has two children, and ain't Hosea's, and she goes out, she's out there living it up, sleeping with her lovers, playing the prostitute. And in chapter 3, God says, go yet love a woman. So go look. He said, I want to notice where it began. Go love this woman. And when Hosea hears that, Hosea goes, and he said, I bought her to myself. 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley. He pays this price for her. Was she worth it? Probably not. Was she worth it? I mean, she'd already had two children with some other man that wasn't even his. She's out here, she's out here sleeping with other men for money, and Hosea says, I'll buy her. Was she worth it? No, she wasn't worth it. And neither were you. Yeah. If you think you were worth what Jesus Christ went for on the cross, you've got too high of a, of a view of yourself. Amen. He didn't owe you that. Right, right. So where did it begin when God said, go love this woman? Yeah. Israel had played the harlot on God for hundreds of years and hundreds of years. And God cast her out and, and he took everything he ever gave her away. He said, but I still love her and one day I'm going to buy her back to me. Yep. Now that's Israel. Yep. But I'm telling you right now, the Gentiles were in far worse shape. God gave us up back in Genesis chapter 11 and gave us up for thousands of years. When the fullness of time was come, God sent his son down here to die on the cross to redeem us back to himself. Amen. Were we worth it? No, we weren't worth it. Amen. But God purchased us anyways. Notice what he said there in Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through what? His blood. Where's my redemption comes from? It comes from the blood of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Paul said in Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. Because of what Christ shed on that cross, I am now freely justified by the grace of God through the blood that was shed for me at the cross. Colossians 2.13, Paul said that he has forgiven us all trespasses. I mean, there we were, Gary. I mean, my goodness. We were dead, ruined, corrupt, vile sinners mm -hmm. with a debt we could not pay. You could pay it, and it would just take you an eternity in hell to pay it. We had a debt we could not pay, and the Lord Jesus Christ paid everything we owed him for. Yeah. I like the song, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Mm -hmm. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Yeah. Everything we owed, he paid it full with his own blood. Yeah. And then Christ, and then, and then when we believed it, we were sealed. And I ain't going to spend a lot of time there, but the moment you trusted Christ upon hearing the gospel, you were sealed. That is, you were marked by God as one of his own. What was you sealed with? That Holy Spirit of promise. That's the mark. That's the mark right there. The moment you trusted the gospel, you were sealed and marked as one of his own. You were marked as, as, as a purchased possession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is that, that seal, and he is the earnest of our inheritance. Meaning he's like the first fruits or the down payment of the inheritance. Remember, I mean, I, 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 I'll go to the Old Testament and use these stories to make application. Remember when Abraham sent the servant down there to get Rebekah as, as the bride of Isaac? Mm -hmm. 
And he says, my master's acquired great riches. <clears throat> Remember? Mm -hmm. And he's given all of it to his son Isaac. Remember? And then he's like, do you want to come or not? <laughs> he said, I'll go. What's he do? He starts taking out bracelets, putting them on. Starts dressing her up. What's he dressing her with? The riches of Abraham. You realize what the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is taking the very riches of Christ and putting them in us. And the more of those riches we get, the more we groan to go with it. By the time Rebecca sees Isaac there far off, and listen, I, I'm just making application, folks. I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but I'm just making that when, when, when Rebecca got a distance off from Isaac, she said, who's that? And the servant said, that's the master. <laughs> she jumps off, boy, and runs the meeting. Yeah. Where I'm, listen, man, if you ain't excited about the prospect that before this day is over, the Lord Jesus Christ might be sitting up there in the clouds. Yeah. If you're not excited about that, there's something wrong spiritually in your life. Yeah, you're right. And I didn't say you weren't saved. I didn't say you, weren't, you was lost. But there's something wrong spiritually because, because if the Spirit of God is teaching you and guiding you, He's teaching you to look for that day. Amen. Amen. And when I thank Bill before this day is over, Jesus Christ might be sitting up there in the heavens. You think I don't get excited about running to meet him in the air? <laughs> and you say, why? I've got the riches. Yeah. And the more of the riches you get, the more you just say, let's just go. Let's get it over with. Let's get it over with. Let's get it over with. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Last of all, I'm yeah. done. Here I, I mean, here I'm, I'm standing here this morning, folks. All the debts paid. Yes, sir. I owe God nothing anymore. You realize that? Christ paid it all. Yeah. There is no debt I owe. Christ set me free. Christ died on the cross, redeemed me, purchased me. I'm sealed. I'm marked as one of God's own. And I have, I have the earnest, I have the riches, the taste of those riches. I have it all. And one day soon, I hope it's soon, one day soon, Christ is going to come and redeem what he purchased. Yeah. That is the most precious day I can imagine. Mm. I, I'm, I'm on, I mean, just a, a day that if, you, if you've got the right mindset, it's a day you're looking for. It's a day so important that the Spirit of God sealed you under that day. Amen. What is that day? It's the day that we get the redemption of our body. <clears throat> yeah. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and I'm done. What's it going to be like, preacher? <laughs> oh, man. If I knew that, <laughs> I mean, I, Take off now, I've, got, I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Mm -hmm. Now this I say, mm -hmm. that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. That's, that's you right now. Yes. Yeah. You Now didn't Paul say in Christ we have an inheritance? But you can't inherit it in that body. That's right. Flesh and blood cannot inherit those things. That's why, the third, that's why when God predestinated, he predestinated adoption, an inheritance, and the image of Christ. Before you can inherit the inheritance that God's given you, you've got to have the redemption of your body. Mm -hmm. This body can't, it can't have it. That's right. A natural man can't see those things. Yeah. We're, getting, we're getting out there in the left field right now. You're in a natural body and all this stuff. This is why the Spirit of God is making us see and understand things that eye cannot see. Ear cannot hear. The Spirit of God is helping us discern those things spiritually. That's the earnest. One day, Gary, we're going to throw this natural body off and put on a spiritual body. And those things are going to become things we can see and hear and imagine. Yeah. Okay? Now, Paul, Paul says here that we can't inherit those things in this body. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Not all shall sleep, but all shall be changed. In the moment the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the, dead and, for the trumpets shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we will put on immortality. That day is real, and it's coming, folks. Amen. And you, you, say, you say, well, I've been hearing that my whole life, and guess what? There are people that's been dead for 2,000 years that looked for it. People have been dead 1,500 years that looked for it. Guess what? It don't matter. 
nobody's going to miss it. Yeah. If you die, you still didn't miss the rapture. Right. It's an event that takes place for all of us. Paul said, now here's the difference. He says, not all shall sleep, yeah. but all shall be changed. In the moment, the twinkling of an eye, all of us, the entire body of Christ, yes, from Paul all the way down. Yeah. There's coming a moment, Bill, when Jesus Christ is going to come down and blast that trumpet, and all of us are going to be changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye. Now Paul said, look back in verse 38. I'm, I'm really closing with this. Folks, I'd love to go into great detail on these things, but we're just short on time sometimes. Look back in verse 38. Man had asked, you know, Paul, Paul knows how many he is. He said, but some man will say, I think back up in verse 35, but some man will say, uh, how are the dead raised? With what body does it come up? Paul yeah. said, thou fool, <laughs> that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. That which thou sowest is not, you know, what, what comes up out of the ground, on and on and on. But in verse 38, I want you to notice what Paul says. He said, but God giveth it a body if it hath pleased him, yeah. and to every seed his own body. Yeah. That, that means in the resurrection, when we, when we raise from the dead, we're all getting our own distinct body. You got that? Every seed gets his own body. We're all getting something distinct. And it's going to be a, we're going to receive a body that, that is as it pleases God. Yeah. Now listen, I ain't worried about that. If it pleases God, it's going to have to be well pleasing to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but what is this body God's going to give you? God, God saved us for a purpose, folks. Paul talks the same way back in Corinthians where he says that, he says that God hath set every member in the body if it hath pleased him. And so in the resurrection, you're going to get a body that is specifically designed and made by God to fulfill the purpose he has for you in the inheritance he's going to give you. It's going to be yours. And it's going to be perfect. You ain't got to worry about that. And it'll be a body you're well pleased with. And it's going to be a body specifically equipped with power and glory and all this stuff to fulfill the will that God has for you. Look at what he says in the next verse. Paul explains some of it. He says, all flesh is not the same flesh. He says there's one kind of flesh of fish, another kind of flesh of, of men and, and beasts and fowl. Now right there, right there, we, we, we know that God gave animals their own bodies, right? Yeah. And he gave them bodies according to what? Number one, where he chose for them to live. Right. He said, he said you fish. He said, I'm going to give you scales and gills because I want you to live in the water. And he designed those bodies to fulfill a purpose that he had for them in that realm and dominion he gave them. The fowl of the air, he said, I'm going to give you wings and feathers because I want your main habitation to be in the, in the, in the open firmament of the heaven. And the birds go and they eat and they, I mean, we know, they use the bathroom and that's the way God chose to spread seed in the earth. They had a, they had a purpose behind their design. The beast of the field, God gave them a dominion and, a, and, a, and, a, and he, he shaped them and gave them the body he wanted them to be and he gave man their own body. And so what, what Paul's saying here is he's saying God designs bodies and gives them to, gives them to his creatures for, to, uh, according to what habitation he's given them and according to what purpose he has for them. So now look at what he says next. There are also bodies celestial and bodies terrestrial. Heavenly and earthly bodies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, say, well, we get preacher. Remember, God, God gave everything. He's gathering everything in heaven and earth in Christ. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then Paul said, in whom we've obtained an inheritance. Where's our inheritance at? Is it in heaven or is it in earth? It's in Christ. We know it's in Christ, but where's it at? It's up there. Mm -hmm. So what kind of body are you getting at the resurrection? You're getting a celestial, celestial. body. Okay? Israel's going to be raised. Listen, we know is Moses is going to be raised. Daniel's going to be raised. God told Daniel, he said, you're going to stand in your lot at the end of the days. They're going to get terrestrial bodies. Bodies of the earth. We're getting heavenly bodies for the inheritance God's given us in the heavenly realm. Now look at what he, he said. Then he talks about the glory. He said, there's one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and one glory of the star. And for one star differeth from another star in glory. That, that means when resurrection happens, we're not all getting the same glory. You go out there and look at the heavenly bodies. There's, you look up through there, not, there's not one star in the sky that's the same. Yeah. 
They all have varying different degrees of glory. And so when you're raised from the dead, now I believe it's going to happen instantly, Bill. I mean, we'll, we'll talk, I mean, I'm not going to talk about the judgment seat of Christ this morning, but the, when Christ comes instantly, boom, you're going to be changed in a moment of twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. And you're going to appear in that body that God wants you to have. Yeah. And you're going to be taken by Jesus Christ and presented to God the Father in that state. Mm. And that's you're going to get an inheritance. That body, I mean this I know I know it's hard to comprehend folks, but it's it's the reality of it. Okay? And so not everybody's going to get the same glory. <clears throat> and so I'm I'm closing with these statements right here in Philippians. This is the important thing. When Paul Paul writes Romans chapter 8, he says if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Every one of you are heirs through adoption. If I mean, if you believe the gospel, we're all heirs through adoption. But Paul lays something else out here. He says joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer. That's two different conditions. If you're a child, you're an heir of God. If you suffer, you're a joint heir with Christ. That means they're... they're, they're this glory that we're going to receive, folks, the glory that we receive at the resurrection can go all the way up as high as being a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, I don't hold out much hope for myself, yeah. but, you, but I want you to know and understand, folks, that you, you, you can say, well, I'm not going to hell when I die. Yeah, that's wonderful. But I want you to know and understand that there is a life to live after this. Yeah. Yeah. Paul told Timothy, lay hold on it. Lay hold on eternal life. God's freely gave, given it to you. You don't have any excuse not to have it. God freely gave it to you in his son, and you are to lay hold on that. Because where does the glory come from? Paul said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. 